Jesus left Jerusalem and set out for the territory of Tyre. There he went into a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, but he could not pass unrecognized. A woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit, heard about him straight away and came and fell at his feet. Now the woman was a pagan, by birth a Syrophoenician, and she begged him to cast the devil out of her daughter. And he said to her, The children should be fed first, because it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the house dogs. But she spoke up. Ah, oh, yes, sir, she replied. But the house dogs under the table can eat the children's scraps. And he said to her, For saying this, you may go home happy. The devil has gone out of your daughter. So she went off to her home and found the child lying on the bed and the devil gone. The Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Jerusalem Bible translates well the endearing term Kinarion, which is a small tune, a small dog. It's the pet dog, the house dog. Otherwise it could sound harsh in our ears. We noticed the Lord is walking long distances. The shore where Tyre and Sidon are to be found is a good way from his base of operations in Galilee. And it is in pagan territory. Maybe he was actually looking for more space because one can see what happens if there is automatic and free healing. People will flock, but that will crowd out the person and also crowd out his true ministry, preaching and teaching the word. And so he's not in a hurry to start again with even non-Jews. But he cannot pass unrecognized and unnoticed. People cry out. And of course he elicits from this lady a beautiful prayer. 
an act of confidence. She argues, as it were, banters with him, barters with him, and gets her way. We have in the first reading today a reference also to Sidon and all that goes with this pagan worship. Solomon is influenced by his wives and he contaminates the worship of Israel. The Lord did not want this for he was choosing a people for his own and educating them in monotheism. And what do these pagan cults involve? Well, the psalm that we have today refers to sacrificing children to demons. Something of that is coming back to this land where demons and snakes were cast out by our apostle Patrick. The devil wants this last jewel in his crown. He cannot bear a Catholic land. There are strange forces at work from outside the country to topple the country from within. But it is important to be aware that what the devil wants is blood and the honour of him indirectly but also directly. For the Taking away of innocent blood in the womb is a great victory for him, an insult to the Creator. But also he cannot bear that a lamb should be full of sacramental grace. Many are the priests in Ireland still, and everywhere there are churches. The holy sacrifice and the sacraments are celebrated all over this land but he wishes to whittle away, chip away at the intensity of this grace by making it ineffectual, by making sure that the teaching does not accompany it, so people can receive, but actually to the damage of their soul and not its upbuilding, for it is deflected by a hardened soul, and where there is lack of faith in the real presence, the Lord is not welcomed. The demons are very pleased when this happens, especially on the level of a large area. And then it is easy for false teaching to come in. But the Lord does warn, sometimes through privileged souls, that sin is always sin. One cannot take a bit of the spiritual life and, as it were, invest in that and make it our own. It is all or nothing in a true friendship, and therefore to receive the Lord's body and blood, we do it under his terms and not ours, and we cannot receive absolution for an ongoing sin. Father Stephen Shire, who died in an accident and was heading the wrong way on the other side, was given a second chance through the intervention of a Blessed Lady. But he was given to understand on the other side that one thing was extremely dangerous. It was the abuse of confession. Confession is not a rubber stamp used as permission to sin. It involves metanoia, a change of mind. And therefore, if it is not accompanied by that metanoia, it leads to hardening of the heart. And indeed the Lord, when addressing the Pharisees, said that Moses had allowed divorce for their hardness of heart. Do we want hardness of heart in our Christian faith and practice? Or do we want an evangelical renewal where Christ is Lord of all? Because he's Lord of the heart. Our religion is not just ritual, it is relationship, and relationship demands the heart, the mind, and yes, let's say it, the will. And the will is total, or we are plain.